Hello, I'm Gerard Fisher from RAP and I'm directing the project to RAP on the development and implementation of buying guidance and specifications for buyers and specifiers of electrical and electronic products in the retail sector. As part of this work, we've developed summaries of different product categories in order to identify where failure modes are occurring and how they can be avoided through specifying components, design and user guidance best practice. This webinar will focus on LCD televisions. After reviewing the project objectives, Mark Hilton of SKM Enviros, one of the technical experts who's helped to develop this product summary, will talk through the key highlights of the summary. Finally, I'll conclude the webinar and discuss what next steps and where to find further information. Through RAP's Electronic Products Pathfinder Group, industry recognised the need to identify design changes needed to increase the life of selected electrical products by bolstering durability. The end result will be guidance development for technical managers, buyers and suppliers to provide industry standard accessible content. A first step has been to research the most common failure modes within the product summaries, which provide a first step towards the development of more detailed guidance documents. In partnership with the Pathfinder members, we've selected washing machines, fridge freezers, vacuum cleaners, microwave ovens, kettles and televisions for assessment in these product guidance notes. The structure of the summaries is the same for each product and will include an introduction on how to use the document, the short-term failures that may result in a product being returned to you, the long-term failures that prevent it from reaching its long-term life, and then best practice in terms of component specification, design and user instructions. Finally, it will identify the opportunities for lifetime extension. So now for more detail on this product and handing over to our technical expert. LCD televisions, um, modern designs, are very, very reliable actually compared to the older style um, CRT TVs. But nonetheless, um, there are lots of short-term faults that can occur and result in returns. And we're going to talk about some of these on, on this slide. So the first one is actually in setting the thing up in the first place and tuning it once you get it home. Um, now, a, a fault at that point may be down to user error, but that in turn may be down to a complex procedure. Perhaps there's no auto-tune function, poor instructions in perhaps bad English, um, or it may actually be down to a, a fault on the uh, a printed circuit board that uh, is programmed to, to do that. The second thing is about the, um, the stand and the wall mount. Um, a number of TVs actually have quite weak um, stand arrangements or wall mounting arrangements which actually have a plastic to plastic uh, connection rather than connecting through uh, with strong metal parts to uh, the chassis of the of the TV which is generally steel. Um, there may be poor quality mouldings that mean that parts have got little cracks in or depressions that make them inherently weaker and that again can lead to, uh, to cracks and so on and, and the item being returned. There may be a fault with the um, the picture and the and and the way it presents the the screen itself perhaps may be faulty. There may be a fault in the in the control board or a component on that control board, which means that the picture isn't quite as it should be. Another common fault, particularly with uh, very thin TVs, is poor sound quality, and um, this is quite difficult to prevent in the sense that there's very little room for decent speakers in a very uh, slim TV but um, nonetheless um, poor speaker quality and the way those speakers are mounted um, can make matters even worse. Remote control as well can can fail um, again that might be down to a, uh, a manufacturing fault or a programming fault in the device or it may again be down to user error that in turn again may mean that the thing is too complicated to use or perhaps the instructions aren't very clear. We're going to move on now to some longer term faults or more complicated faults perhaps. So on the next slide we're looking at uh, some other things that can go wrong. So the first one is around power and quite often uh, the TV just won't turn on and um, or goes off very suddenly and that might be down to a, a fault on the the power board, um, the printed circuit board that controls the power supply and transforms it. So uh, that might be a component failure. It may be due to surge damage through the uh, through the uh, grid supply. 
through the mains. The next thing is um, connectors. So of course there are lots of connectors that connect the circuit boards and um, also for example connect the um, the external connections, the HDMI connector, SCART, lead, the um, aerial uh, cabling and so on. And that might be down to uh, a poor choice of connector, um, perhaps uh, the plating on the connector, or it might be down to a damaged joint. You sometimes get dry soldered joints. Spade connectors can be problematic, for example. Um, the next thing is around switches. Again, you can have poor electrical contacts um, uh, on switches, or maybe it's, it's the way the plastic moulding is made. Um, that means that the contact isn't very very strong or um, the button eventually weakens. And then a lot of units also have a DVD player and uh, DVD players um, reasonably reliable but eventually they will wear of course and the uh, the laser um, uh, unit will, will fail or perhaps the, um, the mechanical uh, aspects that that bring the tray in and out of the um, uh, or the CD in and out DVD rather in and out of the the unit. So moving on to the next slide, there are a number of different things here that interrelate. So um, around best practice, we might be talking about things about user instruction and how to set the TV up and uh, and operate it uh, properly. We might be talking about component specification top left hand corner there. We might be talking about broader design issues uh, or, we, or we might be talking about specifying uh, quality through particular standards. If we talk about that last thing first, there are no durability standards as such in terms of the uh, the life of, a, of a, an LCD TV but there are safety standards which um, are, are relevant in terms of electrical integrity and there are also some um, environmental uh, or eco-design guidelines which are relevant that are mentioned here. Um, there are also standards around um, the design of printed circuit boards which are relevant. In terms of user instruction, um, the way uh, the stand is attached or the TV is mounted to a wall for example are important. I've mentioned tuning and setup as being important aspects. Um, and also just the way the TV is operated so that it's simple to use with the remote control, there are intuitive menus and that type of thing. We'll talk a bit more about design and, and component specification on the next slide, so uh, I'll not cover those now. So moving on to that, that next slide, we're going to talk about design issues for durability and reliability. The first thing is about really the, the materials that are used uh, for the the case of the TV and and just how rigid that is and and whether it's got a strong supportive um, steel chassis um, weakness and flexibility um, in the casing and the chassis can result in in twisting and flexing of the circuit boards and the connectors and and that can result in in problems with um, the electronics we've talked already quite a bit about having stable and strongly attached stands and wall mounts and that's really important so that the thing doesn't fall off the wall or, or uh, the stand crack or whatever. Speakers I'm going to talk a little bit more about on the next slide. Um, another, another aspect is protecting the, um, the connectors and the switches and so on and um, although most things seem uh, are normally done by remote control these days having um, switches that stick out at the side of a a TV, for example, is uh, you know potentially makes them vulnerable, um, particularly when the the unit's being moved and so on. So recessed um, switches that are well protected and and out of the way is helpful. The most important thing, really, with with electronics is is that the electrical and electronic design is robust, and and there are a number of things around that that are important. For example, surge protection. For a voltage spike on the on the main supply, making sure that if one component fails, it doesn't automatically mean that other components fail in, as a consequence. Making sure that there's good heat um, dissipation, that uh, for example, process processor chips don't overheat. Um, 
TVs don't normally have cooling fans like you get on a, a laptop, for example. So it's important that components aren't sort of crammed together and that there's air circulating around the back of the unit. We talked about connectors. They need to be properly plated and soldered and so on. In regard to that, um, surface mount components can be helpful rather than what are normally called through mount components that have little uh, legs that are soldered onto the circuit board. Um, so there are a number of things that can be done in the electronic design and the uh, making sure that everything's robust in that regard. So if we move on to the next slide, we've just picked out a couple of opportunities for better specification for durability and reliability. So the first one's around this um, issue of the stand um, and the wall mounting, and, and that all relates to you know how well the casing is designed. Um, good quality materials, high impact um, and materials that will stand high impact, have having uh, good good strength, such as uh, PC ABS, um, for example, having a good steel chassis, making sure the mounts connect through to that chassis um, is is very important. Uh, and so things can be done to, to specify those things fairly simply. The second opportunity here is around poor sound quality and you may get vibration associated with that. Um, that might be down to speaker quality. Um, often it's down to the way the speaker is mounted and, uh, and having a very strong rigid speaker um, mounting onto a rigid case anti-vibration mounts with, with rubber grommets, for example, can help isolate any vibration um, through to the, the case rather than projecting the sound out um, through the front grille as it should do. So again, these are things that can be specified to a degree through um, specifying anti-vibration features, for example, um, request quality control data, or perhaps to do some sampling of those things as well. Of course, better quality speakers um, may increase cost, as might um, better materials that are used. Thank you. Full product summaries for all products will be available for download from RAP's website from January 2014. Full guidance documents will be made available by March 2014 and there will be further engagement on the format of these documents. For further details, please contact RAP through Claire Ollerenshaw, the project manager, at claire.ollerenshaw at rap.org.uk. Thank you for listening.